and welcome back to our pre-section videos. We're now in section 2.3 where we're talking about basic differentiation formulas. Now up to this point when we wanted you guys to do these derivatives we made you guys use the definition of derivative with all the algebra. But you've heard about and heard about and probably some of you guys have been introduced to the simple way of taking the derivatives because someone has caught the pattern before you. So instead of having to always do all this algebra limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, there are actually formulas for taking the derivative because someone has caught a pattern on this stuff. So here are our basic differentiation formulas. So if you have if f of x is equal to a constant, the derivative of a constant is 0. If f of x equals x, the derivative of x is 1. Remember, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. If you think about this, if I've got y equals mx plus b, the slope is m. It's always the coefficient in front of the x. The coefficient in front of this x is 1, so the derivative is 1. So then if I have f of x equals c times x, well, the coefficient in front of the x is c, so the derivative of, of c times x is just c because that would have been the slope. So these kind of match up to that. But now we get into uh, major formulas here, like f of x equals x to the n. This is called the power rule. And how do you take derivative? And the pattern is this. To take derivative of x to the n, you bring the exponent out front, x, and then subtract 1. So the derivative is an x to the n minus 1. So if I have a constant times x to the n, well, the constant doesn't matter. That holds over. So you just leave the constant there and take derivative of the x part. x to the n comes down. The exponent comes down n x to the n minus 1. And this works for all exponents. Okay? Now, and just like I did before, if f of x is equal to a constant times a function, constants hold over. You're going after the variable with this stuff. So if I have c times g of x, the derivative is going to be c times g prime of x. You also have something called the sum difference rule. Whether I have a sum or a difference, when taking the derivative of a sum or a difference, you take the derivative of each term. So f of x equals g of x plus h of x, then f prime of x would be g prime of x plus h prime of x. And similarly, f of x equals g of x minus h of x, then f prime of x would be g prime of x minus h prime of x. So you take the derivative uh, through pluses and minuses. You take the derivative of each term. However, a little special note down here. However, if f of x equals g of x times h of x, we can't just take the derivative of each term like we did up here. And if we have a quotient, g of x over h of x, we cannot say that f prime of x is equal to g prime of x over h of x. These will be special formulas that you'll get to see on the next video. <coughs> so the goal here is to get you guys familiar with the basic definition, uh, definition of derivative formulas. These are the formulas for taking the derivative the quick way. So. Instead of doing all that limit work stuff, we actually want to look at this stuff and know exactly what the derivative is. So let's start using our, pro our properties up here. Labeling is everything. So f of x is equal to 17. What would the derivative be? What would f prime of x be equal to? Well, the derivative of a constant is 0. So derivative of 17 would be 0. If y equals 3x, then y prime, you can also use the like fixed notation, dy over dx is equal to derivative of 3 times x, looking at my formulas up here, derivative of constant times x, the derivative is just the constant, so the derivative is 3. If k of x is equal to x to the fifth, then k prime of x would be equal to, remember x to a power of the derivative, you bring down the power, 5x, and subtract 1 from that power, it's 4, and there's my derivative. And that is the key to math, is noticing a pattern. And that's how you get the derivative quickly without having to do all that limit work. But remember, if they ever tell you on a problem, use the definition of derivative to calculate this stuff. Well, the definition of derivative, you've got to use the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. But if they just say, take derivative, this is what we want. Here's another one. h of x is equal to 5x cubed. Well, h prime of x would then be... 5 is a constant, leave it alone. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. You go after the variable, bring down the power, x, and subtract 1. But then you want to clean it up. So h prime of x would be equal to, well, 5 times 3 is 15x squared. 
you know, I did this intermediate step, but eventually we want you guys just to be able to look at this guy, bring down the power and multiply three times five is 15 X squared. There's my answer. Okay, well, let's see if we can do some more of these guys. You'll begin to see that taking derivative, if as long as you know the formulas, can be rather quick. So here we go. But we don't always have to have x, so I just decided to throw a different variable at you. If v of r is equal to 4 pi r squared, take derivative of it. So I'm looking for v prime of r, or for you Leibniz fans, dv over dr, the derivative. You can just get familiar with both notations. Now remember, 4 pi is a constant. We'll leave it alone. Now r squared, that's an r to a power, the derivative, you bring down the power r and then subtract one from the power. Two minus one is one. And you can clean this up so you get v prime of r or dv dr is equal to two times four pi is eight pi. r to the first is just r. And there's my answer. But always remember this. Clean up your algebra first. We have rules, and you're going to, we're going to add more rules, and there are going to be more rules that your professor is going to give you in class. We haven't even looked at the trig functions yet or anything like that, but uh, they're going to give those guys, to you guys in class as well. But remember this, always clean up your algebra first to try to make it look like a rule. So this is the fact of the matter is, this is d uh, over dx of square root of x, and so this is equal to d dx of x to the one-half power, okay? So, this means take the derivative of what follows. Again, we're also trying to throw notation at you guys on this stuff. So, what is the derivative of x to a power? With you, if it's, even if it's a fraction, because we don't do square roots. Bring down your power, one-half, x, and subtract one to the negative one-half. Bring the one-half down, x, subtract one, uh, one-half minus one is negative a half. Now, you can leave it like this, but you can also clean it up so this will be negative exponent goes on the bottom, and the two is already on the bottom, and a half a power is a square root. So we'll take either way you want to look, make the answer look. So this is also the same notation, d dx. Take the derivative with respect to x of what follows. So this would be equal to, well, four is a constant, derivative of x to a power. You bring down the power, x, and subtract one. Three halves minus one is one half. And then you want to clean it up. Two goes into four two times. Two times three is six, x to the half. You can leave it like that, or if you clean them up, half a power is a square root, you can also leave them like that. So we are really happy with taking either way. If you type this stuff on web work, don't forget to put parentheses around your exponent. But don't forget to clean them up. For example, this guy, v of t equals one over t. They asked for the derivative, so with this guy, this guy's labeled, so we want to label the derivative. This would be v prime of t. But before we take the derivative, you gotta clean them up. I don't like stuff on the bottom. So 1 over t is the same thing as t to the negative 1 power. So now take the derivative, bring down your power, t, and subtract 1, negative 2. So this is equal to negative 1 over t squared if you clean them up. We will take it either way. So we're just learning about how to get familiar with these particular rules. So let's take a look at some of these more difficult ones. Find the derivative. d of x is equal to 9 over x cubed plus 3x plus 2. Before you take derivative, clean them up. d of x is equal to, I don't like stuff on the bottom. This is 9x. To bring stuff on the bottom, you make them negative exponents. Plus 3x plus 2. Now, labeling is everything. If the function's called d of x, then the derivative is d prime of x. The derivative, bring down your power, negative 3. Let's go ahead and multiply it times 9. That's negative 27 x, but don't forget subtract 1, that's negative 4, plus derivative of 3 times x, a constant times x, you just get the constant, plus, and derivative of a constant is 0. Remember, plus or minus, you take derivative of each term, part of our sum difference rule. So, you can either write d prime of x is equal to negative 27x to the negative 4 plus 3, but if you really wanted to clean that up, we would also accept negative exponents go back to the bottom, negative 27 over x to the 4 plus 3, and this is the back of the book look. So when you're doing these problems out of your textbook, these are the way they like to type up the answers there. Let's take a look at the next guy. g of t is equal to 5t squared plus 4 over t squared minus 18. First, clean them up. g of t would be equal to 5t squared plus 
four. Now I don't like stuff on the bottom, so I'm bringing them to the top. T to the negative two minus 18. Again, we're trying to give you guys a different look. We don't always have to have X as a variable, so this one I threw a T at you, but you still got to clean them up. Now we want to take derivative. The derivative of T, G prime of T, would be, well, derivative of 5T squared, where we bring down the power. 5 is a constant, that holds over, so 2 times 5 is 10. T, and then subtract 1, that'll be to the first power, plus 4t to the negative 2. The root of that guy, bring down your negative 2, and negative 4, I mean, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8t, subtract 1. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And the root of minus 18, minus 18 is a constant. There's no t's there, so the root of that would be 0. So you can write your answer as g prime of t is either 10t minus 8 t to the negative 3. We're more than happy to accept that answer, but if you want that back of the book look, also, let's write the word also there, also g prime of t would be equal to 10t minus 8 over t cubed. We would accept it either way, and this is the back of the book look. And one more for you guys. g of t is equal to 4t cubed minus the square root of t plus 2. But before you start taking derivatives, clean them up. Make them look like the formulas here. We like powers. We don't like radicals. So this is 4t cubed minus t to the 1 half plus 2. So now I'm going to take derivative. Labeling is everything. So this guy's called g of t. This will be g prime of t. You may also want to write it g, dg over dt if you would like. That's the Leibniz notation. Get familiar with both notations. So here's derivative. What's derivative of 4t cubed? Well, you bring down your power, and constants hold over, so 3 times 4 is 12t squared, minus derivative of t to the half is 1 half t, subtract 1, negative 1 half, and the derivative of 2 is 0. So we would accept the answer as g prime of t being 12t squared minus 1 half times t to the negative 1 half, or, again, that back of the book look, this is 12t squared, that's a squared there, minus negative exponents go on the bottom, a half a power is a square root, so that would be 1 over 2 times the square root of t. Either way, we would accept these answers. But you need lots of practice with this particular material. And also within chapter 2.3, we're going to introduce to you guys some of the trigonometric functions, the derivative of sines, cosines, tangents, and the like. And we will continue with showing you more rules of how to take derivative with the next section, 2.4. So here's a big section that you really have to master. So study hard.